Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. My dad and Chad are working on the new tractor that we got to the farm, which is awesome because I'm going to drive it today and it will be my first time ever. So stay tuned for that. I'm here with Jed Fulbright from Frontline Egg Solutions and he's going to be explaining what he did to our tractor that's out at our farm. Uh, so basically uh, we put a case drain, um, filtered case drain into the hydraulic sump um, so that going to the air seeder, this tractor was purchased uh, recently by the customer and it uh, didn't have this option. And uh, without this option, um, if anything was to happen to the fan motor on the um, air seeder, then debris can go throughout the whole hydraulic system. Um, so this ensures uh, that that doesn't happen. And also, um, it uh, relieves the pressure off of the hydraulic motor so that um, you do not blow the seals out. And um, so it was a pretty quick install, pretty simple. Um, and that's about it. Wow, thank you. How many years have you been working on equipment? Uh, 16. Wow, that's so, awesome. And we love John Deere, so thank you. Yep, you're welcome. He's a good guy, Kate. I mean, he so now I'm going to attempt to climb the tire. Today is super exciting because it's going to be the first ever time I drive our new tractor at the farm. So if you watch my new tractor video, that's the tractor I'm driving today and I'm just absolutely excited. We're going to be disking and it's going to be so fun and I'm going to learn so much. So I hope you enjoy. My dad is driving the disc to the field, which is awesome. And I'm following in the car behind. Right now my dad just pulled off the road because there's a semi truck coming by, which you can see, and it's really important to watch out for these things when you're driving big machinery that takes up more than the room than the lane it's in. And this is also very similar for combines as well. I have to do that if we have cars coming behind us or even oncoming lane of traffic. Push the clutch in all the way, okay. bring the gear shift out, put it up and just let it be in here. You're in seventh gear, bring on the RPM a little bit. Ease the clutch slowly up, now let it go. Now push the disc in. Okay, drive drive that wide wheel on this side of it over here. Follow, know where you're going for one. Now just stay in your side of this and then towards the end of this, Kate, bring up your RPM a little bit with the throttle. More, right there probably. Stay, stay a little bit over. But we wanna go into the the hole here a little bit. See, I plowed over the top of it a little bit, but follow up here, drive for up there. Today we are disking the washouts in the fields and that's caused by water runoff. We disk both sides of the washout and it really helps to make them smaller and less apparent so that when seeding and combining and everything like that, it's a lot easier to use the equipment in the fields. Now you got a good line, you see where it is? Yeah. Okay, now straighten out more. Drive the front end, not the back. We're right where we should be. And then up here, we wanna be out, turn out a little bit. Follow that, the deep part of that. Bring your outside wheel just on the outside, now straighten it out, drive the front end. The back end follows where you want it to. It's a certain distance of your wheel from that hole. Look back, see what you're doing. Is that getting too cold? No, just let it go, let it go. But drift out a little more. What happens, Kate, is we're not getting enough dirt to turn that disc. I'll stay about right here on this edge. And when we get up here, we gotta go that way. Okay, it drifts a little bit in. Now straighten it again. You have to drive, do a lot of steering with the front end to make the back end follow nicely. Yeah, you see, you're right where you want to be there, kind of. Stay on your side, and then we'll just lift it up, do a nice soft turn around, come back. Turn straight for a little while. Okay, about now, we'll, we'll just lift it up. Up? Pull it all the way, hold it. We're either in or we're out, okay. Nice turn to the right, turn. Oh, lower RPM. Well, I would. It's good. See, we got a little bit of a rut here, but I should probably go up and do that one again, too. 
Back to the edge over here by the ground. Easy now, not too sharp. You get wound up in that thing behind you because this thing bends in the middle. No, no, go back over here. Let's catch it right at the edge of that beyond this brown thing here because there's nothing here to plow, really. Snug up to the edge there a little bit. Get ready. Down. Not yet. Your thing is now. All the way. Just let it go. Okay, now get back to your driving. Okay, where are you going? You're okay, but come back now. Stay where you need to be here. You, you can see where the real valley is, right? Yep. Okay, that's where you want that thing in. You better get over there a little bit. Okay, now it's straight. Straight, okay. You're a little deep, Kate. Straighten out again along the edge. Hold it right here, distance from that hole. Now look back where your disc is. See, it's about where it needs to be. Bring up the RPM a little bit. You're running a little low. Get a set distance and check where the implement is. It's pretty close to right, okay? It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Okay, now look where the coolie is going. I didn't do it perfect either, so you want to not be as deep as you are now. You're right on the edge of that with that wheel. It's okay, but it depends. Sometimes you've got to drift closer to it and out. It depends on what kind of a turn you got. If it's a, a turn to the left, you'd have to get closer on that. Pay attention to where you're going. Look back, see what you're doing. This is about right, isn't it? Okay, look at where you're going here. A little far out. Yes, you, you gotta pay attention to where this is pointed because this is gonna go where it's pointed. If you don't keep it pointed correctly, it's gonna go not correct. Okay, you can see this is white up here. Out this, of Right, so we're not gonna be really deep because it might be soft and wet. We don't know. Okay, when we get up here, we gotta go left with the coolie, you see? Oh, we're going over there. Yeah. Now just kind of drive straight over there. Get back, drive over there, kind of. And we're going to follow this up and lift up right, 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 turn right. We got to come back down that because we went up. We're just going to plow a little. Oh, this is pretty damp looking. So we're not going to plow there. I'm going to tell you when to lift the plow. Okay, and we just let it walk through here because this is still damp, cave. Okay? I mean, really damp. So we're gonna go up here and teardrop back in on that a little bit. So there's a lot of mud on the tires, so I got to drive the tractor. My dad wanted to teach me how to do the disking. It's a little bit of challenging. We don't do a lot of it. So I'm super excited and that was a very fun tractor. It's a 9630. It has 4,600 hours on it and it's a 2011, I forgot to say that in my new tractor video. Today, I'm giving you a wheat update. It's super exciting and the wheat is doing so well. We received about three inches of rain. So that's a huge amount for the area and we hardly ever get rain. So the crops really needed it and they look super great. In this field is Warhorse winter wheat. So winter wheat is the type of wheat and Warhorse is the variety. It looks a lot like grass when it first starts growing, but as you can see, it's super tall and so much taller than it was last time I showed it to you. It is crazy and it looks super good, as you can see. If you look this way, you can kind of see the rows, maybe. There we go. But it will get a lot taller and it's doing super well, so I definitely wanted to give you a weed update. The Montana skies are beautiful and it's actually a gorgeous day today, so that's super exciting. Sometimes I get questions about what the most type of common crop is in Montana, and that is wheat for sure. And the area we are in is called the Golden Triangle. So it's the best place in the country for producing wheat. It's phenomenal. We get very windy days and dry weather, so we can't grow anything like corn or crops that need a lot of moisture. My uncle Chris actually grew corn once as an experimental crop and it just doesn't turn out as it does in other places. So our best use of our land is for wheat, but we're also starting to get into pulse crops like chickpeas and lentils. And that's also sometimes common around the area, but those are the most crops we kind of grow around here. You don't see a huge variety. Most of the fields will be either wheat or pulse crops. As you can see, this is a really big field I'm standing in and we've got three grain bins over here. So it's green for days and days and days. You should definitely subscribe and like this video because you'll get to see me harvest this exact field when the wheat is all grown up and ready to be harvested, which is so exciting. I can't believe it. And I absolutely love driving combines. So 
I'm extremely excited. Okay, now I'm over at the 13 bins, part of the original homestead that my great grandfather homesteaded when he immigrated from Denmark in 1912. And here is planted lentils. So they do kind of look a little bit like weeds, but they are not, they're lentils. And as you can see, they're so cute. They are absolutely adorable and they're just coming up right now. So that is amazing. I'm so excited. And in my second trucking lesson, they were just barely breaking through the ground and look how much they grew with this wonderful rain we had. So I'm so happy that we got the rain and this is what they look like. My great grandfather was from Copenhagen in Denmark. So that's awesome. And I'm so glad that he homesteaded our family farm. I'm fourth generation. Here are the lentils. Here's a better view. I'm kind of walking through the field here. I definitely don't want to step on them because that would be so sad. And then there's the grain elevator way over there in the distance. So I'll give you a zoom in. And then those are the grain bins. And then that's the schoolhouse. That one is now on our property, but it used to be for the schoolhouse. And all of the kids of the people who homesteaded would go to school there. They'd either ride horses or walk to school so that's pretty amazing and also the elevator was built in i think around 1930 and it was also built my by my great grandfather so that's awesome and i actually have a video about that so you'll have to check it out and this is so exciting as you can see this is the little pattern the lentils are in it's kind of harder when by the road and edges we won't be harvesting these because they don't grow very tall there it's not like wheat you need to have something called a flex header to harvest them so that your header lays flat on the ground and doesn't get a lot of rocks in it and kind of ruin. But I will show you the process of harvesting them. We just don't have that type of headers because we mostly do wheat and we're very new to lentils. All right, I'm just walking now and I see an antelope, which I'm going to show you right now. My dad actually drove by the road and saw a little tiny baby antelope. So he took a picture of it and I'll have to insert that here because it is just adorable. It's a complete newborn and the mother was standing right there and it's very cool. Here, I'll zoom in and see if you can see him. We have wildlife all around here in Montana. Okay, there he is. Aw, this is an example of an old homestead right here. And that would have been where people who were originally homesteading this land would have lived and they built that place. So that is your wheat and lentil update. So basically all the crops, that's your update. I hope you enjoyed my video and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to see more farming videos and learn how your food and clothing are grown and get to your table. Also make sure to follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S-A-G and on everywhere else. Okay, bye. Here are some of our grain bins. As you can see, these are just three of them. <music>